What's going on everyone? It's the Print House and today I have a show and tell for you. So first off, I want to apologize. I have a little bit of a cold, so I might have to clear my throat once or twice. Um, but as you read the video, I am going to be telling you guys uh, how to determine if your 3D printer filament has too much moisture in it. And I'm going to be giving you a couple solutions to fix the problem and mitigate it from happening again as best as you can. So what you're seeing here are four stages of 3D prints. Now, on the far left, we have my first stage of prints, and then going from left to right uh, are the successions of what I did and the results that I achieved. So, right here you see four first layer prints. Now, there's tons of under extrusion there. It just looks bad. Uh, and I have the final part as well because I let it go through and actually finish the print. And so these are the results that I got. Now you can see there's some stringing, not very much, there's a little bit of stringing, uh, but really you're just gonna notice really poor surface quality. There's gonna be uh, zits all around it. There's going to be uh, issues with structural stability so if you have a part that needs to be strong you're gonna have issues with that uh, and that's because the lev uh, the level of plastic on the inside just it's it's gonna be uh, fewer and far between uh, with like actual infill uh, the plastic layers aren't gonna adhere to each other as good uh, or as well so as you can see this is one of the first things that you should uh, begin to expect if you notice prints like this. If you also have prints like this. So these are first layer prints and they are absolutely perfect. So between uh, these prints, I did nothing. The only thing I did was remove the yellow filament from the 3D printer and put the white filament in. And you can see the results are drastic, right? So the final print has outstanding surface uh, finish. It has no zits, no stringing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with these prints. These these prints are as close to perfect as I believe you can get. And the first layer is near perfect. So when I saw that I was getting prints that looked like this, I knew that I was dealing with under, uh, under extrusion due to uh, wet filament. So, the solution to that, if you have filament that is wet, is going to be a filament dryer. Now I have two of these. One of these is by Eson. Uh, so this one is by Eson. And then this other one is by Jo. Now they're very similar. Uh, a lot of people use these incorrectly. <clears throat> so these filament dryers, they plug into the wall and usually they have a few settings on them and a screen and it's essentially a dehydrator. Now you lift the lid, whoops, <laughs> drop your filament in, close the lid, and there's a hole right here where you can put your filament out so you can keep your filament in here while you're printing a long print and it'll essentially dehydrate your filament for the duration of your print. Now, if you have extremely bad, uh, extremely wet filament, it's recommended that you put your filament inside a dry box and you dry it for 10 to 15 hours before you're preparing to print. So what I did was I put my 3D printer filament inside this Esun box for 18 hours and these were my results. So I'm not quite sure what happened with this one on the far right. Uh, but it looks pretty bad. 
but these other two look a little bit better. So after I noticed that I got two prints that looked decent, I printed a full print. Now you can see here that this looks much better. This does not look great by any means, but there's no stringing. There's definitely an issue with uh, surface quality, but it's by no means as bad as this. So this one again has zits everywhere. It just looks terrible. So I noticed some improvements. Uh, now from there, I was like, I noticed some improvements, but I still had the issue with this one on the right. So I put it back in the dry box and I dried it again for eight more hours on a little bit higher of a temperature. And these were the results that came out. So these results, once again, are not great. These results are passable at best, but it's better than having to throw away an entire spool of filament. Now, what happens when you have filament that has a lot of moisture in it and it's bad? So uh, with structural integrity I was talking about, you're gonna get poor structural integrity. So right here, you can clearly see the piece that uh, on the side, it just broke off. So this piece is supposed to be up there. And when I went to go uh, test the part to see how good it was in terms of fitment, that just broke off. So the surface quality is a little better. You're still going to see pits, but uh, I'm, I guess, chalking that up to the fact that this filament just isn't great filament to begin with. I'm gonna to continue to dry this filament and see if I can get better uh, performance, but uh, see, uh, there's still pits. On this side, you're seeing tons of pits. So, I do have some examples of some prints right here, uh, and I will attempt to get some close-up shot comparison, uh, comparison shots for you guys but, uh, yeah, so that is essentially what uh, wet filament is going to look like and how you can determine if you have wet filament. So one thing to mention really quickly about these filament dryer boxes is that a lot of people use them incorrectly. They just load their filament in, turn it on, and go. That's not the best way to use it. So the best way to use it is with these desiccant packets. Some of them, uh, these dryers, actually have a spot to put it. So for me, on this uh, machine, it doesn't really do very much, but the desiccant packet goes back here. The desiccant packet is going to suck the moisture out, and then the dehydrator is going to uh, dry it out, and then the desiccant is never gonna get full of moisture. Now what I do is I normally fill the bottom of this up and then I take the roll and I just put it in there and I go. It normally will still spin just fine. These have wheels. And I don't know if you can see this, but these have spinning wheels and your filament is going to spin a lot better on this than it will on the filament holder, spool holder that is installed on your printer. So guys, the moral of the story is when you buy 3D printer filament, save your desiccant packets and make sure you get a few of these dehydrators or dry boxes. Now, another way that you can mitigate this problem is by buying filament that is properly shipped. So you can see clearly this filament is still in a bag and it's sucked really, really tight. The air is not getting in. This is completely airtight. This has been in a bag for about a month and a half since I purchased it. I do, obviously don't know when it was manufactured, but the air is not getting in here. This is extremely airtight. Uh, and now this is eSun. This is PLA Plus. I buy it on Amazon and it is normally perfect. I say normally perfect because this package of eSun, there's a little bit of play in this bag. I can feel that the vacuum is there. It's just not very good. Uh, but uh, normally, eSun is this good at absolutely no air getting into this bag. So there are other brands like this brand, which does just as good of a job as eSun, 
uh, if not better. And I mean, you can see how the filament is just completely, or the bag is just completely sucks to the filament. Uh, you want to find a brand of filament that manufactures and ships out filament as a quality uh, this high. This is really, really good. Any manufacturer that ships filament of this quality packaging is a brand that you want to keep going to. So, I have a few other brands here, and you can see how loose these bags are. This bag, as a matter of fact, actually has a hole in it, right? This is not okay. Poor, poor, uh, this has really poor, uh, uh, just ship, uh, packaging, uh, department. This is not okay. This is probably very wet and almost definitely is going to need to be dried out. This is also a wood filament, so it's likely to pull in even more moisture. Uh, and do not trust a brand just because it's a big name brand. See, this is Creality Filament. This actually came from Creality's website when a printer was purchased. This bag has, it, it's terrible. The packaging is awful. So just because a brand has a big name does not mean that the filament is good quality uh, or the packaging is high quality, I should say. Now, once again, we have another uh, example where the filament bag is sucked uh, super tight against the filament. Uh, so I guess the moral of this story is that you really want to find a brand of filament that does a good job packaging because if you find a brand that does a good job packaging, you're going to have to do less work at home and you're going to have to dry your filament less. So you will get, uh, you will find a brand of filament that you always like to go to. In my case, it's eSun. And like I said, they normally ship good packaged filament, but sometimes you're going to get filament that is not packaged so good uh, or not packaged so well. And in a case like this, this one is good enough to where I won't send it back. But if I purchase filament that came like this, and fortunately I did not purchase this, but if I did, I would most definitely send this back. To me, this is not okay. This is not acceptable. Guys, I hope this helped. Uh, if it was helpful, please drop me a like. Uh, Pepper wants you to drop a like as well. <laughs> anyway, like I said, drop a like, subscribe, put some comments down below. I'll see you in the next one, guys.